하면 뭔가 다른 내용이 있어요. 그러니까 그 카메라 포커스로 좀 자동 포커싱 해주려는 거예요? 아니면 혹시 뭐 다른 게 있어요? 어, 그 카메라 포커스는 아니고 어, 망원경에서 이제 기어를 돌리면은 이제 초점이 빠졌다가 들어갔다가 하는 그런 장치가 있는데 아 내가 잘 모르겠는데 네. 혹시 뭐 하나 화면 공유해서 뭔가 좀 보여줄 게 있어요? 제가 잘 모르는 분야인 것 같은데 네 잠시만요 이거 그 혹시 지금 아, 화면 공유 옵션 비활성화 되어 있는데 네 제가 대, 다시 해드렸어요 대충 뭐 요렇게 생겼는데 기성품대 같은 기어를 돌려가지고 저반부가 이렇게 빠졌다가 들어갔다가 이런 걸 조절해 주는 장치로 보겠습니다. 그러니까 그게 기어 돌리는 거죠? 그게 저기 그거 같은데 저기 원리는 제가 보기에 똑같은 거 같은데 어 저기 그러니까 근데 포커스 확인은 어떻게 해요? 자 포커스가 잘 맞았다 안 맞았다 이거를 눈으로 그냥 할 건가? 아 그거는 이제 망원경에 렌즈가 들어가는 그 결정이 되는 건데 사실 포커스는 망원경이랑 따로 나온 제품이라서 초점에 대한 정리랑 확인이나 그런 건 필요가 없습니다. 그럼 그냥 저, 저것만 그러면 되면 되는 거예요? 아, 그러니까 왔다 갔다 선형 움직임만 되면 되는 거죠? 네, 선형 움직임만 되면 됩니다. 그래서 저게 렌즈가 지금 앞뒤로 왔다 갔다 하는 거죠? 네. 네. 어... 여기 이제 그 저발 렌즈가 장착이 되면 왔다 갔다 혹시 무슨 레벨에 썼어요? 레벨에서 쓰는 건 아니고 제가 그냥 개인적으로 한번 만들어 보고 싶어서 그렇습니다. 그러면 혹시 저 다른 렌즈나 이런 거는 갖고 있어요? 렌즈는 이제 이게 그 망원경 대부분의 망원경들에 통용되는 그 배럴 어, 크기가 어. 있어서 네, 네. 그걸 기성품을 그냥 꽂아서 사용할 수 있게끔. 네, 어. 그런 식으로. 네, 그럼 그 기성품이 그냥 꽂히기만 하면 되는 거죠? 이 선형 무브먼트에? 네, 그렇습니다. 네, 네, 오케이. 아, 네. 그런데 저거를 뭐 버튼으로 왔다 갔다 잉잉 하게 하고 싶어요? 아니면 이렇게 돌려가면서 하고 싶어요? 아니면 손으로 그냥 하고 싶어요? <웃음> 그 전자동식도 생각을 해봤는데 너무... 여기 있네 전동 포커서라고 네. 있네요. 여기. 네, 조금 그거는 어려울 것 같아서 네. 일단 이것만 해도 조금 어려울 것 같더라고요. 그래서 손으로 하는 거를 일단 목표로 하고 있습니다. 전동 포커스 전혀 어렵지 않은데 요걸 하나 보여줄까요? 네. 잠깐만 그 보자. 그게 그러니까 결국 지금 얘기하는 거는 다 리니어 액츄에이터라는 거고요. 이런 거 액츄에이터 이런 거 되게 재밌어요. 이런 거 굉장히 강추합니다. <웃음> 이런 거 기계 만들고 이런 거 아주 좋아요. 네. 자, 아유 설명 설명이 너무 길다. 이거 보이죠? 네, 보입니다. 여기 결국 볼 스크류 드라이브라는 건데 여기 아래쪽에 보면 이제 나사가 있어요. 스크류를 쓰는 거고 이 위에 이게 여기에 이제 이게 볼트 같은 거를 껴서 여기 이제 연결이 돼 있고. 여기에 스테퍼 모터나 DC 모터나 보통 보통 스테퍼 모터를 많이 써요. 
정밀하게 할 거면 스테퍼 모터를 많이 쓰고 이게 많이 왔다 갔다 해야 되는 거면 DC 모터를 많이 쓰는데 그럼 이 가운데 게 왔다 갔다 하는 거예요. 요 정도면 돼요? 아, 이, 요런 방식은 처음 보긴 한데 네, 요런 걸로도 한번 만들 수 있을 것 같습니다. 그래서 이제 뭔지는 잘 모르겠는데 요 위에다가 이제 렌즈를 그 어댑터 같은 거를 이제 고정시키는 거는 이제 본인이 이제 개발을 해야 돼요. 그리고 그게 이제 좀 중요한 거. 요런 거는 약간 스탠다드화 돼서 도면 같은 게 요런 건꽤 많아요. 그리고 이제 요런 것도 하나 있네. 요거 보면 재밌겠다. 네, 이런 게 보이죠. 자, 이거 이해 되겠죠? 볼 스크류는 이제 이런 거고, 이제 이렇게 벨트 드라이브 방식도 있기는 한데, 벨트는 당연히 벨트가 so 이게 위아래로, so belt will probably uh, there will be a vibration here. So 이거는 별로 안 좋겠죠? 렌즈 같은 거쓸 때는. 근데 이게 그 기기마다 좀 사용 방법이 다르고, 이볼 스크류는 굉장히, so it's the movement, the linear movement of ball screw are is quite stable and actually right. precise. Linear motion control system configuration, including the number of axes of motion, is often the first factor that needs careful thought. 자, 이러면 요거 이제 뭐가 되죠? 요게 이제 x y 니까 2차원 CNC 가 되는 거예요. So now this one become two axis CNC. And then if you add one more on top of a vertical one, that's actually three axis CNC. 이렇게 계속 이제 증가를 하면 되기는 돼요. 뭐좀볼거 있나? Often between 0.5 meters per second per second and 5 meters per second per second. 네. 이런 게 있고 그 이게 뭐지? Do it by linear screw drive. 이제 이거를 이제 직접 만드는 사람도 되게 많아요. 그러니까 요게 아마 근데 저는 그냥 추천을 그러니까 이런 것도 사실은 so you can buy this kind of thing. You can just simply buy it. However, the purpose of this class is making one by yourself. So I would I strongly recommend that you kind of 3D print everything, make everything other than probably uh, this screw. It's, it's kind of like meaningless to build this screw. 그리고 나사선이 있는 거 요것만 빼고는 나 아, 볼트도 좀 있겠다. 그 약간의 그 미케니컬한 거 요런 거는 어차피 살 수밖에 없고 서버 모터도 사야 되고 요런 거는 이제 어쩔 수 없는데 요런 거 요런 조인트 같은 거 있죠. 조인트랑 렌즈에 들어가는 요런 거는 이제 조립을 직접 만들어서 하는 게 좋아요. 크기는 어느 정도예요? So what is the size of your linear actuator? 크기가 그러니까 전체적인 크기 말씀하시고. 네, 그게 아마 그게 어, uh, so most of actuators the dimensions are actually decided by uh, this stepper motor. And then when you select this stepper motor and stepper motors are actually quite standardized. Uh, 나중에 모터에서 설명을 좀 드릴 건데 보통 이제 니마라는 거 혹시 들어봤어요? Did you have you heard about NIMA stepper motor? NIMA is not a brand. NIMA is probably uh, some kind of what what NIMA. NIMA가 뭐 놀스 아, National Electric Manufacturers Association이라고 이게 그러니까 제조 연합체인데. 이 모터가 워낙 다양한 사이즈로 나오니까 이 호환이 서로 안 되잖아요. So there are too many different uh, dimensions and designs of motors. So the World Global Association decide to standardize the size and the dimensions of motors. So they any manufacturer's product can be replaceable. 우리 저기 is kind of similar to The power adapter of your smartphone is standardized by 
uh, kind of micro USB or mini USB or USB-C. So you can use any manufacturer's uh, power supply can be used for any smartphone. 네, 요, 요런 건데, 요 니마 모터 크기를 결정을 해야 되는데, 요거에 따라서 이 모든 관련 부품이 다 달라져요. 왜 그러냐면, 이 축의 두께가 달라져서 그렇거든요. Because it depends, so you have to first select the size of motors first. And if you want to select the dimension size of a motor, then actually you can identify the dimensions of this uh, motor axis. And then all your sub parts will be decided by this dimension. 이거 때문에 되는 건데 우리 일단은 일단 제가 해주고 저희 랩에 썼을 거면 아마 일단 스타트는 so for your start project I probably I can offer you NEMA I will check it probably it will be NEMA 23 it's one of the most popular one probably. Or Dima 23 or Dima 17. I will check uh, the precise dimensions later. Or Dima 13. So these are most common uh, Dima motors that you can buy almost anywhere. You want them to go in there. So you need a kind of connector between rod and this motor axis. 요거 하면 될것 같아요. 요거는 근데 어 어느 정도 마음이 결정된 건가요? So did you <웃음> do you decide that this direction is kind of uh, confident? <웃음> 아 요거 제작을 하긴 할게요. 네, 네. 네, 근데 조금 더 구체화 해보고 좀 불편한 부분이 많겠다 싶으면 어떨까 생각. 하고 있습니다. 네, 네. 어, 근데 제일 중요한 거는 So the most important thing is that anyway you are going to spend your time so do something you are interested in. That that's the key. 예, 재밌는 거 하세요. 왜 어차피 시간 써야 되는 거니까. 예, 재밌는 거 만들면 시간이 훅 가는데 재미없는 거 만들면 괴롭거든요. 그러니까 재밌어 할 거를 하세요. 네, 네. 아무거나 해도 상관없어요. 네. 근데 uh, but however, uh, this linear actuation is the, the, most, the most fundamental part of any robotics. So I actually, I think it is a really good project. Uh, in my case, uh, So I bought this one, I just purchased this one from, I think, AliExpress. However, I designed uh, this connector using 3D printer and I designed and 3D print fabricate this uh, syringe holder. And this one, and then also I designed this part. This one is attached to robot arm like this. And then this one is actually bio 3D printer using robot arm. So this will squeeze this syringe and then the biosynthetic material will be injected inside of the syringe and this syringe will print out some kind of a human body. But however, this is the most common way that the world leading biosynthetic printer manufacturers use. It's basically the same thing. 또 이런 거 해도 그러니까 여러분 이거 배워 놓으면 한번 이 linear actuator 배워 놓으면 so once you learn about the linear motion and how to control it using stepper motor uh, this is quite fundamental 그러니까 너무나 기본적인 거라서 there are many the kind of there will be varieties of project you can extend 이거 할할게 되게 많아요. 네. Uh, Ishan, would you uh, let's? Uh, we are talking about our potential final project. Would you just uh, talk about your final possible 
not fixed <laughs> possible project you like to do? Uh, I cannot hear you. I think your mic is, would you raise the volume of your mic? Mm, I cannot still, oh, okay. Uh, I still cannot hear you. Or can you, would you, uh, do you upload any material on a Facebook? Mm. Or, or we can talk next, next time. Uh, oh, oh, now I feel like I can hear you now. Uh, mm, mm, not anymore again. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about next time. Okay, ah, hologram 3D projector. Oh, that sounds very good. Oh, yeah, 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 the, the glass and laser cutting. That, that's quite good, yes. Uh, so probably uh, hologram. Per. Uh, so do you want to make something like this triangular one, something like this kind of stuff? So uh, I recommend, uh, yeah, so that's good. So, uh, Oh, more or something like this. Ah, I, I don't know what that is. Ah. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, let's design uh, a box very nicely. Uh, but uh, this one could be your just first attempt. However, we can really make it something really nice. Um, hi. And magic newspaper. Uh, uh, but do you want to make it in a, so you want to make something a flexible screen? Oh, I see. Oh, so would it be nice that you just kind of sketch or some design that how does it will, how it will look like? It would be very helpful. So, okay, so it looks like we have a lot of interesting project. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so last time I explained about that uh, we are going to work on uh, 3D CNC. And there are many different ways of making a 3D model. So um, I kind of shortly revisit what they are. So there are actually surface model or frame model or volume model, 3D modeling type. 
Uh, so I kind of, uh, there are three different ways of making your 3D model. You can make it using wireframe. You can work with surface or you can work with solid. Uh, let's revisit uh, each of them very quickly. Uh, so something easiest one is actually solid modeling. And in terms of solid modeling, uh, solid modeling, the technique is you see a model. Actually, this one is rather close to actually surface modeling. So. Uh, when you see your product in terms of solid modeling, such as this, then you see your end product as assembly of multiple subparts. So it's very highly normally used in mechanical engineering. Solid modeling at the solid modeling at the solid hand part to guide the curve then go again. So when you work your when you develop your model using solid modeling, the basic technique is you actually subdivide your product uh, like this and something like so you kind of design a lot of small parts. Sometimes it's a spear, sometimes it's a cylinder, sometimes pyramid. And then you create a kind of complex part using Boolean operation. So let's say, so you have something inside. So the first process, so kind of the sequence of your model developing is, uh, I strongly recommend for you to at first draw something on a paper. Your own sketch it a bit. Uh, for example, okay, let's go back to the linear actuator. What you need is simply, you probably have a motor. Let's say, just assume that this one is very crude. However, consider that this is a motor. And then motor, something important is probably the axis, the road uh, over motor. So let's say that, let's kind of assume that this is the one. <laughs> I know it's really, um, looks bad. <laughs> so this is kind of basically your motor. And let's just think about that. Uh, you may need a kind of base or chassis that uh, you want to make this one some stable position for a linear motor. So you add some base part. And then you probably have at least two, three, a column. So you can actually use it as a kind of a structural frame. And then you can either move it or copy and there are many. And imagine that uh, you're a kind of the center part that rotate your lens would be located somewhere also in the middle. And then pro let's just assume that this is the model that move around. And then definitely this one supposed to be a little bit smaller than to avoid any friction between this subframe or other stuff. So you may probably using scale and there are scale 1D, 2D, 3D. So in this case, probably I just simply use uh, scale 1D to offer some space between base and this adapter, I would say. And then probably you may need a connector that combine the axis of a motor to a road. And this one definitely need to hold uh, both of the road and the screw. And then we also need to draw a screw that stay in the middle and then however i didn't really draw all the details here now i just kind of roughly check about how this one simply looked like so this is your first step roughly kind of like 
some sketch model that give you a kind of rough assumption about what your final product will be. And I am not so sure, however, you also have a lens that will be attached something larger than that. I don't know how big your lens will be, but this one is supposed to be need to be sit over this base. So probably I move it to center and then we need another holder that need to attach this one. Uh, a little bit, let's make it, let's make it a little bit better, bigger like this. And then probably this one is, don't, does not need to be really big. However, this one probably need to be sit above this one. So now let's think about that. I know that this is really crude and it may not make any sense, however. So let's assume that this one, this one, let's say this one is our kind of like custom adapter that we need to 3D print. And then let's change some color to, so this, let's imagine that this is the kind of model that we are going to 3D print. I, I mean, this is really crude, however. And then, and then I'm kind of just simply describing. So this is kind of the first process, which is kind of roughly just draw it. And then you have to fine tune again and again and change everything kind of thing. So now let's say that this one is adapter to hold this lens. So I probably need to make a hole in the middle. So I would rather using, in that case, Boolean uh, difference. And then I selected outside model first and then select the middle one here. Then now you see that this one will have a hole here. But this one eliminate the original lens. So I just undo that. And then I just selected this one. And as you see that this one needs to be a little bit larger because if it is almost exactly the same, that will be my have a problem. So I will just simply using scale and 2D and I probably using the center point of it. And I just make a slightly, very little, very little larger. But at this time, what I do is when I do scale 2D, I make, I click this one, copy. Currently it is set as no, but I change it to yes. And I do repeat one more time from center to slightly large. I just make a little bit too large because I want to show it to it clearly. And then I operate the Boolean difference using this scaled version of it, not the original one. So if I want to do one more time, uh, Boolean, difference, select surface or sur poly surface to subtract from, so something larger one and enter. And then select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract width. So I select this little one and enter. Then now you see that this one have, this one become a hole, have a kind of empty area in the middle. I just hide it. So now this one can be uh, hoarded. And also this one also need a hole to be stayed in the middle. So I would do the same process one more time. So I select this one and then I probably also scale 2D and by selecting the center of it, checking the copy is yes, making slightly bigger. Now you probably have a question that how much should I make it bigger? The answer is, how can you know that how much bigger you have to change the rod? Unfortunately, there is no theory to calculate that. The only answer is, How can you know? Uh, yes, you have to, you can measure it. However, how, how can, but that does not guarantee 
that your measurement will work even after 3D printed or CNC'd or laser cut it. Let me see. Uh, can I, is there anything I can show you? Uh, So um, this is another my test project. It's kind of similar thing that uh, we are designing now. And then what is the solution? So you see, we got to kind of show the answer very quickly. Do you see, uh -huh. <laughs> and do you see this black tape? This is actually sponge tape that holds the, the middle part firmly. And actually, we kind of like uh, we thought that it is almost impossible to make everything so tight and doesn't move. So actually, we have kind of we have think about adding some sponge tape to hold it. And then, as you see that I actually, when you have this kind of thing, I split half so you can hold it together. And there is another hole that screws can go through it, and then it will be attached to if you can hold it tight. So you need to think about, you need to design uh, something like this. So let's imagine that if you kind of make that, uh, one thing we are going to do is, so we have with this one, uh, also we need to go through the Boolean difference one more time. And I select this as a surface from, and then I select this one, as a surface width, subtract width and enter. Then actually this one has a minor hole. And then I let's just hide it for now. And then let's say that I just kind of like, I only need to work with this one only. So let's say that this one has a hole inside and then this one has another hole for lens. And probably for this one, what is the best way to assemble like this. There are many, many design variations. So probably the easiest solution will be you can draw a center line from here and then I make it a little bit long and then I kind of move it down and then I'm using split. So I select these two surfaces and enter. And then it asks you cutting object. So I select this line and enter. Then what happened is now this one is splitted into two pieces. So now you have this one. And after that, this one cannot be 3D printed, but then this one has or kind of multiple shape. How can I? <laughs> close this open surface. What do you remember the command that you used before? open surface Cap Cap So cap, you use a cap, then do it and do it. And this one and this one. So now you can actually 3D print this and then you probably need to make a place to make a hole. So now this is the basic process of making a part using solid modeling technique. So you are kind of design something crude object one by one and then assemble them and split them or Boolean difference or Boolean intersection. So you do all, all kind of this kind of operations. So now this is kind of known as uh, solid modeling technique. And then many um, so-called, you, some of you may think about your major as mechanical engineering. And this is what the most common way of designing in mechanical engineering in robotics and other area. So this is the solid modeling. Any question about this solid modeling technique? This is one of the easiest one process. Okay, so now let's switch to surface modeling. 
So uh, I will delete everything. Again, I, I use the show and hide to see. And so for surface modeling, probably one of the most uh, common project that you are going to see, see is actually car design. So let's say that, oh, actually I, I kind of see, uh, 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 I'm a big fan of Ferrari which I may not be able to buy anyone in my life. <laughs> so let's say that um, they, they just make it so beautifully. Um, uh, and then um, can you imagine how Ferrari designers design this kind of car like this? Uh, actually, they made it clay. So this is not possible to really design uh, this kind of beautiful and natural line. Digital is, doesn't really make sense at all. Clay mock-up. So let's say that actually they uh, build everything actually by hand. Um, yeah, it looks very fun, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think it looks really fun. So they make a mock-up model and see from the eyesight and they just cut out everything. And, and then uh, actually what they do is actually, um, they actually scan it. So after that, um, they build this beautiful one and then 3D scan, uh, 3D scan car model. So there are many ways to convert this physical model, clay model, a car a clay model into 3D scanning. So if they have a lot of, so they actually build one like this and then they basically they scan it, they convert it to um, a digital file of it. However, uh, because the digital file only have the outside surface, it's made out of clay. So it does not mean that if you have a clay model, still that have a, it, that the digital file of the car surface model is producible or not. It's on totally another issue. So after having uh, this kind of uh, digitally converted 3D geometry of uh, car model, uh, what the car designers do is they have to split into multiple pieces and then they have to manipulate and fix a lot of errors. And then uh, what, how they do is kind of, let's say that is kind of, kind of uh, this way. So let's, uh, it's not really good. Uh, however, it's kind of the, then actually, um, so let's imagine that, um, I, I cannot really start a car design, so just accept this one just as a kind of like model. So let's imagine that um, what you need to think about is like a so-called control point. And this one, this has only uh, four control point at the edge of it. So this is just to, um, the surface of it. And then you can actually change the density of control points by using rebuild function. So, but I would not really increase dramatically because if I have a large number of uh, control point in meaning that the influence of each control point is very local, meaning that this one only change very small area like this. However, if I have a lower number of control point, then actually the impact of manipulating the position of the, is actually quite wide, but kind of subtle. So what you are going to do is you're going to come and back and forth between changing the number of densities back and forth and let's just kind of, I know that you are a good uh, at imagining something because you are young. And let's imagine that you're creative and let's 
all together, imagine that this is Ferrari car. <laughs> I know it doesn't totally make sense, but let's just imagine that this is just overall car design. And then probably to produce this car design, of course, there is no such a large metal sheet that you can produce as a one piece. So you have to actually subdivide it. And there are many ways to subdivide it. For example, you can actually draw a line and then probably you can split using this surface using a, so select this one and split cutting object this, then you are going to kind of like cut in these pieces into half. And then let's kind of imagine that from here, uh, what you have, when, something you have to be careful about is that I tried to rebuild after cut it. Then as you see that this one still have four by four. It's strange, isn't it? This one does not have four by four. It has only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four by four means it's supposed to have 16 control points, but it does not have that much, that many control points. What's going on here? Can you identify what's going on here? That's exactly. It. So this one still maintain the information of previous original surface. So if I just, then if I try to change that, sometimes it will work. Sometimes it would not work. So I just double it up. If I do that, so it was lucky for me to have this, but what does that mean is this one is, so I kind of told you that this is the uh, vi simply visualization of geometry. So what is inside is uh, this one kind of have a history, a kind of history. So sometimes you may have some strange errors will happen. In that case, what you have to do is you have to reconstruct this surface as if using some information you have on this one. And that thing is actually uh, uh, this one. So what I have to do is, first of all, I want to extract the silhouette. Using, I'm using silhouette. Then you have this corner. You have, then you can actually have this corner line, such as this, such as uh, not this one. OK, so. I just, this one hide it temporarily. And then here there's a curve, I select it. Also curve and curve and curve. So you can actually reconstruct curve out of this boundary, which is you, you probably use network surface. And then now a new one is you see that has like some different shape, but this one, something nice thing about this one is that this one, you probably see that this one is ISO curve is or a kind of cut in the middle. But the ISO curve of this one is have a grid shape, meaning that this one is a kind of complete surface, meaning that this one is actually one whole surface. On the other hand, this one is something partial informations are embedded inside. So you have to go back and forth about doing this kind of process whenever you cut out and when you assemble them. Another info, but this one is kind of looks like the same with the original one. Actually, it's not. It's kind of slightly deformed. And then because this one uses reconstructed from the outside surface. Another way, another technique is getting ISO curves from this surface. So if you uh, actually select it, and then if you click curve, you can, uh, if you just go to surface, and then there are many surface, uh, surface, you can get, uh, you can go to curve, curve to line, a uh, curve from object, you can extract ISO curve, which is the line that you're going to see here. You can extract point, meaning the control point. You can extract curve if there is. 
And also you can extract wireframe. So this one though, did you still remember that? The order of manipulation of geometry is start from point, curve, surface, and volume. So to reconstruct a surface, you need previous dimensions of geometry, in this case, curves. So here, if I extract isocurves, then actually you can actually select which isocurve you want to extract from. So I probably would select something in the center one here. And then I can actually, let's kind of uh, select from here and many. And even somewhere very close to here. And can you identify why am I doing here? With this, and then let's say that using the curve here, and then using this series, or not this one, so I just hide the surface. Using these curves, I also can create surface using these kind of surfaces. So let's say surface, I uh, blend. I think I should do, so I will do offset, select curved, or uh, not offset, uh, what is it? Um, ah, loft, uh, loft is the command for this. So I sell, so select curve to loft. So I select this one, 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 this one. Uh, not this one. So I just resell. Okay, do loft again. Select this series of curves and then press enter. And then we need to match the start line and the uh, close line. So I just align whatever something problem. I just reset their sequence. And then it looks like it is okay. And now I, and then I kind of rebuild the with control point. So now this one is reconstructed, reconstructed one, but this one is slightly different. So, but there are many ways to do that. Uh, and then another method. So, I, so this is another way of building reconstructing surface and using ISO, uh, ISO curves. Another way of using it is from this surface, you can also create curves wireframes. So wireframe is, if I hide it, you have this kind of surfaces here. So using wireframe, you can actually use network surface one more time. So I select this, 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 this. And also this, and this, 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 and also finally the last curve that wrap around it and press enter. Okay, so first the direction, so one, so one, two, three, uh, sorry for that. So network surface, you need to, you have to follow a certain sequence. So here, select curves in network. So this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then first the direction, I click this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this, uh, this one, and this one. And next open curves. So I click this one, this one, this one, this one and this one, and this one. Uh, it, it doesn't really work. So I kind of, so I kind of select this one, and this one, and this one. Uh, ah, I, I think this one is patch. So if you do patch, select curves. So I just select everything. 
patch will create a, some kind of automated surface out of curves you have and enter. Then actually you have many options if you preview it. So it is a kind of creating the most closest curve that can be generated out of any curves or points or combination, enter it. And then after that, you can actually split this surface using this boundary curves. But when you do that, one of the problem is that this surface is the closest surface that can be made out of this one. However, that does not mean that this one is uh, exactly fit. So what I'm going to do is when you split it, this is curves as you see that some parts are above the surface, but some parts are below the surface. So in this case, what I do is I select this curve, the boundary curve, and the one in here, not this one. I select the one in the middle here, this curve, and the boundary curve. And this curve and this curve. And then I extrude it in a three dimensional space. So extrude this curve on both the sides. So I kind of create a kind of complete boundary. And then I split this original one using this uh, boundary. Okay, one more time, split. Okay, then now you have this reconstructed surface again. So this one, I'm kind of trying to show you that the first one was network surface. Second one is lofted surface. And third one is patch surface. So they're kind of introducing how to manipulate the surface and manipulate them and to work with reconstructed. And then actually this is one of the uh, things that we are going to make that if you have, let's say that this one is the one that we are going to design using vacuum forming. So or Ferrari car design, such as Ferrari panel car. So let's kind of, I'm trying to show you how to make this kind of door. The way how you can do is, so now let's say they imagine that you have a surface here. And let's just kind of see the, what is the size of it. So let's say boundary box. So now this is the minimum rectangular box that we are going to, we need. And then the dimensions of this one is, let's just say the length is 200, about two cent, 20 centimeter. And width is roughly 77 centimeter. And then the height is roughly 30 centimeter, three centimeters. So it's not that high. However, we need a wood material that is at least 34 millimeter thickness. And it's really difficult to get 34 millimeter wood. So what I'm going to teach is how to make a thick material out of this kind of thin MDF. So this is kind of material that we need to prepare. For example, let's say that this one is nine millimeter uh, thickness and we are going to stack them and glue them and make a chunk of wood material. So let's say that how many pieces do we need? Yeah, of course we can just simply divide 34 millimeter out of 9.5. Then, 
contour. Contour. Then I would use contour command, and then the base is probably the ba the base is sorry for that uh, contour command, and then I use the corner point here, and then direction is up way, and then the distance between each piece is nine point five. And then as this one is the kind of the model that we are going to make out of wood. So we need at least one, two, three, four pieces to get this. So I would write down the dimensions of it. Uh, so probably uh, we have, so we are going to cut 34 and we probably, if I use nine millimeter thickness of material, probably we have four pieces, uh, maybe 36 millimeter high. And then width is two nineteen. So I would prepare 220. And then this one is 71. So I would prepare 72 at least. So now what we are going to do is, and then first thing is, like we did before, I want to organize this one in a nice place. So, so I can move this one to zero. So this one is cleanly locate at the bottom of zero, zero, zero. And then this one, just like when we did for two dimensional or 2.5 D CNC cutting or laser cutting, this is the boundary that keep all the pieces in a good place, in, in its original place. But still, I don't need it, so I hide it. And I simply export this one this time. I export selected. However, this time, instead of DXF, I export it as 3DS. So let's say that this one is the first surface we are going to make. And then this one is kind of OK, but if you use fewer polygon, if you preview it, what you will see is a kind of triangulation. And if you use more polygons, it probably have, it just looks like more clean surfaces, but I will just do it somewhere in the middle. And then the file is successfully saved as surface.3ds. Now we are going to recarve Pro that we used to generate NC code or G code. Here now, we are going to set up a new material. And then material width was 220. And Y was actually 72. And thickness this time was about 36. And then press OK. So this is roughly the chunk of wood we prepared in 3DS. And we are going to import. And then, sorry for that. And then instead of importing vector, we are going to import 3D model. And then we are going to select or 3D, uh, the, here's a surface 3DS file we made. Then if we export it, it will be located in a strange way. But if you simply position and import, uh, sorry, that I have to re let's import it. So I simply import it 3DS model and then surface. It will be located in a way. And then I would click central model. Then it will be located at the center of our chunk and then import it. And finally, import one more time. Uh, there is some strange. Okay, I will. Uh, I will just double. Oh, I'm. Let's double check. Was it millimeter? I think looked like I did with inches. Oh, millimeter. Twenty two, seventy to thirty six millimeter. And okay, I just checked the unit here. And then tools. Uh, tools options. This one, this unit is this millimeter. It's supposed to be okay. So I just do just one more time. 
So save as, let's say this one's supposed to be 3DS and desktop, I would call this one surface two and save it. Let's re-import in vCarve and file, import 3DS model, surface two and okay. So now here it is in the center model millimeter, center model, and then position and import. So it said discard data below, do not this. Let's just double check. Uh, for somehow, ah, okay, going back, I do not. So hide 72, looks everything okay, and position input. Let's just input it. For somehow the scale is corrupted. Uh, let me just try, sorry that, let, let me just try one more time. So surface two, so if this is okay, I just reset material 22, 72, 36 millimeter and okay. And input, input 3D model, surface two. So I don't do anything and just, I just click this one. And then discard data position. Ah, for somehow the, okay. So it's kind of weird, create for back. So lock X, Y, Z, show 70 turn 37. This is good. Scale millimeter into center model. Uh, for somehow. How oh, it's weird. It's supposed to be work as it is. Looks like it has some old information. I just tried to export another one. Uh, sorry for that. I just tried to export this one instead. It looks like this one has some previous old information that it used to have. So export the selected. I save it as Surface is three. Uh, and then file import model surface three and position input. Okay, looks like this one, uh, this case, a uh, scale is okay, but the level was wrong. So I just do one more time, everything looks better. So I simply import 3D model, uh, not this one, just import it. And surface is three. And just double check. Oh, I just ro rotated, I just sort of import the file, import 3D model, the three. I'm just checking that how does it look like? And then it says height is 36, everything's okay. Position, and then it said discard data. So I would not check this one. Depths below top is, so I just make it full length. Okay, so this one is look, uh, kind of selecting the position of the height. And then I just make everything is upside of a surface by checking the color and then import it. So now it looks like it is okay. And then it is kind of completed. So this is the kind of car surface and you probably see this kind of triangulization. This is kind of like nerve surfaces converted to triangulated mesh. And then this one can be fixed or can be improved when, by when you exporting it, just make it more polygons Then this polygon uh, could be smaller and become smooth. So in this case now, this one process is a little bit different from 2.5D cutting. So we are going to use- is One sec. These two rough cutting and finish cutting. Rough cutting is it will eliminate any material that is unnecessary very quickly and fastly. And then 3D finish cutting is make it this one really nice and sharp. 
So in rough cutting, actually we are going to use actually end mill. And then I just, uh, just say, click okay. This one is rough kind of material setting part and just click okay. And then it asks you what kind of tools you are going to use. And then I will use the end mill quarter inch that I used last time. And then you can just simply, you don't really need to touch all other stuff. Uh, and then just please just, you can click calculate. Then this is the kind of pass that this will curve out any materials that is not necessary. And then if you actually see what will happen is this will cut out some unnecessary area before finish cutting. So let's make it a little bit faster. And then 3D cutting, as you see here, will take a lot of time. So I recommend for you to do something simple and something small. Actually, it's really kind of uh, size dependent. Okay, so now this is the kind of rough cutting result. And then we close it and the time for this rough cutting will take about one hour and five minutes. And now after this one, we will go through one more time, the finished cutting. And this time we are going to use bore nose drill bit. And bore nose drill bit, whether you remember, it have a kind of very rounded surface. So this one is good to have a continuous surface. However, if you use eighth inch bull nose, it'll take probably forever. However, it will have a very good result. So instead of using eighth inch, we may use quarter inch bull nose and select, then just simply calculate. So now this is the result. As you see that there is a lot of paths. And then if you take a look at how it will look like, this will go very kind of minor area again and again. Where is this cutting? I just make it a little bit faster. Uh, I think the eighth inch is not uh, big enough. So I, I may need to change it to uh, eighth inch router bit. I select it and okay. Model bound, machine limit boundary. Uh, and then I use, so in this case, actually offset and raster. Uh, router is going like step way, offset kind of going from the center. I may change to conventional and then change it. Okay, so then let's see that how does it look like. Uh, it's supposed to cut. Uh, I tried to check what is the error, but kind of this is just overall process that we are going to do. Again, the story for the, let's do something uh, simple. So I just kind of do just, I think it looks like this one is a little bit too complex for even me. So what I do, I just do something simple one first. So here we have a basic surface here, uh, rebuild it using just three corner point, three control point and using this. And I just do very simple one. And let's just kind of cut out this one as a base. So I just move this corner to uh, zero and then let's re-export it. So this one, surface four. 
And then in terms of surface, actually, it'll will have many similar problem. And then I just use the same dimension and then re-import the simple one even. Surface four, and then just import it. So this one is nice and clean because this one is very simple surface. And then I just go through rough cutting and okay. And then using quarter inch end mill and calculate. It will calculate like something very crude one like this. And then this is done. And then the time will be even, even this one will take 30 minutes. And then for finish cutting, I'm going to use quarter inch again, and then simply calculate. Okay, so it said reduce the minimum height for rest. So it will kind of have issues, but still I just kind of go through it. I just simulate it. Uh, this one probably do not have the So I probably use eighth inch. Or rest material was removed before using every tool. So do this. I'll check that. I think this one is because happened because this one is actually non-licensed version because I never have this kind of problem with licensed version. However, this one is roughly going through it. Uh, sorry that I didn't really show the simulation before. However, uh, this is, but simply the process will be the same. And I think the licensed version will have no problem like this. Uh, sorry that it was not so smooth and complete. But that's it for today. Uh, so uh, this one will take a long time. Even the smallest one will take two, three hours. So I'm highly sure that not all of you may want. So it depends on your project. So those who want to go through the only the three, 2.5 CNC, I want everybody want to do something small project for your weekly project as a weekly assignment. However, for this 3D CNC, since it took so many hours, only anyone who want to use it can actually use it. So if you want to test it, just prepare a surface by something very simple that I did just last time. Uh, or otherwise, uh, you can skip this process. But it depends on your final project. If you want, definitely you can actually use this one. I am going through quickly for this, not this introductory class. Uh, I have another course, which is the, if you are coming, if you're majoring creative IT, uh, IT convergence, IT engineering, uh, this is one of the required class. Okay. And then I'm, I'm showing you probably, uh, can, can you, you see, see the, the camera? camera? Okay, okay, I'll want to stop, stop sharing. sharing. Okay, okay then now, now you can, can see me. me. I changed the, the camera. camera. Now, now I'm kind of showing you what other students did. Okay. So do you see this engine cover? Definitely, as you see that this one is done by uh, 3D CNC. And then as you see here, this shoes is made out of 3D CNC. Uh, and then let's see if there's another one. Oh, and then, uh, here is another one that I kind of, he wants a light cover. Some bubble is actually accidentally made because this one's overheated and actually the acrylic is oiled. And that's why it is made out of. So these are some example of using actually CNC. Oh, and here's another. So there is actually motor cover, which is made out of 3D CNC shape. 
And there's actually one more here. And pretty much, uh, oh, and then okay, here's another one. Um, this one is actually, he is fascinated by mechanical keyboard and then he wants to make a larger version of it. Uh, so, so that's, that's pretty much, much it. it. So, so you, you probably, probably have, have a sense, sense of what, what you can, can uh, make it using that one. Uh, and I'm you're so welcome to make airplane or electric car design. And then probably now, now you can understand why recent, uh, do you see the, rear, the recent Kia's uh, MPV car announcement, MPV, uh, multi-purpose vehicle, MPV. Or I would say uh, Staria is one of the recent Hyundai's design that you think that why this kind of car design is more trendy these days. Uh, I would click uh, uh, screen sharing. Because it is easier to probably generate using this kind of technique. Uh, one difference is that this one is actually a little bit, this one is actually press molding and then Oh, the reason why, and then one of the, and then you probably see this kind of truck. So cyber truck, which is designed by um, Tesla. And you probably, and then you probably now can see that why this kind of car is more popular. This, can you, this, can you guess why Elon Musk designed a truck like this? because it's much easier to fabricate. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Um...